Hey everybody, this week has been quite the doozy. I got my own black belt, I graduated high school, and I got an iPad. Oh, I also got a sword. None of that is nearly as important nor as exciting as this My Little Pony episode, episode 14, season 2. This episode was a very good episode, actually. I had to watch it about three times to really get in to get everything out of it. But still, still, I'm pretty sure I missed something in that episode. And honestly, because of time-wise, and I've tried recording this episode before, I can't really cover everything in this episode that I really want to cover in just the 15 minutes. Honestly, I'm going to say this now. You have to go watch this episode for yourself and experience it for yourself because there is a lot going on in the background and the foreground that you can really catch if you're not really into it. That and there's tons of references in here. You just gotta figure out for yourself because some of them are hidden, some of them are blatant, some of them are different and honestly me doing a critique on this episode is going to be hard as balls but I'll try my best. Alright, so Let's get on with this, with My Little Pony Friends of His Magic, episode 14, season 2. I'm going to rush as fast as I can to get through this episode's plot so I can get on to the critiquing part. Alright, Applejack is actually training for the Rodeo Olympic thingies and is actually going to go to the camps a lot to go compete. And meanwhile, out of nowhere, Derpy Hooves shows up. Yes, her name is Derpy, though I'm pretty sure it's a surname due to the fact that in Winter Rapper she is called Ditsy Doo. I just pretty much equate it to how you call your friend Sam, even though his name is Samuel, or Will, even though your friend's name is William, or Dick, even though it's probably his, probably his name is Richard. Though I still don't know how you get Dick out of Richard, but fuck it. Anyway, so Derby Hoops shows up, destroys Town Hall. Good job. First appearance, destroys everything. Good job, Derpy. You keep it up, we'll pay you even more. And, of course, every fan has been squealing about this and been happy. Nice. I'm cool with it. Anywho, as, as of course, uh, Derby Hooves, after destroying this amazingly nice place, Mayor, 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 actually is now pressuring Applejack to go to the contest. Uh, actually, Applejack volunteers to go to the rodeo contest, win first prize, win the, the cash money thing, and come back and pay for the town hall to be fixed even though I'm pretty sure she could just fix it herself, but we'll get to that later. So, she hops on the train and goes off to Canterlot to go participate in the rodeo. Meanwhile, we cut back to a surprise party that Pinkie Pie and the rest of the town is actually holding up. Then, of course, uh, Pinkie Pie is being Pinkie Pie, and now I'm kind of reaffirming my theory of that Pinkie Pie is not made of cotton candy, but she is made of bubblegum with cotton candy hair. This could make sense because of how she stretches around and is acting quite crazy. Probably has more sugar in her than, well, I don't think anything else has as much sugar, or I can't even equate it. Trust me. Anywho, Pinkie Pie is being Pinkie Pie. There's a lot of stuff that could probably be taken the wrong way, especially with the Fluttershy, you startled me. <laughs> Please, Rule 34s, keep at bay. Keep at bay. <laughs> so, of course, Twilight Sparkle mistakes a cult who is in a male pony uniform as Applejack as he, come, as he comes up to the barn and they give him the surprise party instead by accident. Coincidentally, it's his birthday, so he gets cake. Awesome. But the letter he has delivered has not been good news. Turns out Applejack is not coming back to the um, Ponyville and is actually going to be sending the money, though. And, of course, everybody's disheartened and actually very sad about this, especially Apple Bloom and Big Macintosh shedding a very, very manly tear. That tear could probably cure cancer and kick Chuck Norris's ass, so I'm pretty sure I'm thankful that it didn't hit the ground and cause a nuclear explosion. Anywho, as the, as the other five ponies actually question why Applejack won't come back home, they decide amongst themselves to go to Candlelight and find Applejack and talk some sense into her, and or at least figure out why she won't come home. They go off to Cantalot, and of course, in a awesome and very experimental style of no dialogue and letting only the animation and music sing speak for itself, 
there is a sequence of where the five actually tried to look for Applejack and showing off her glamour shots to everybody else in the rodeo coliseum. I didn't know there was a coliseum for rodeos, but I'm pretty sure that's a badass scenery to do. But no pony has actually seen her except for one little filly who actually points out to a canyon and says, well, nothing, but points to a canyon and everybody's like, oh. So, of course, the, so of course the five hop a train and go over to this town. This very dusty town. Uh, and it's pretty much a Wild West-ish town, like Appaloosa, except for for some reason I think this is more barren than Appaloosa. But anyway, I didn't know Canterlot sat next to the Wild West so closely, but it does kind of fit in continuity of what Granny Smith was talking about back in the episode. No, never mind. Sorry, getting off track. Um, anywho, they get to the town and they find Applejack by semi-accident from Pinkie Pie rushing her out of the bathroom. I don't want to know what's going on in that bathroom. Anywho, that it's an outhouse that flushes. Um, I'm pretty sure outhouses don't do that. Uh, anywho, uh, of course, they find Applejack, and Applejack is now working for Cherry Lou? Cher Chera Lou? I kind of want to call her Cherry Lou, but it's like Cheryl Lee, Cheryl Lee. Uh, it's, screw it, she's not that important anyway. And of course, Applejack is now picking cherries, or bucking cherries, more, other than apples, to raise money for a suspicious reason. Actually, she won't tell anybody the reason why she's there, why she's not coming back to Ponyville, and just says she won't tell them, and then tries to move on to her, on her way. So what do the five do? They rationally think of th think of a good plan and decide to just stalk her like a crazy per like a mob of crazy people. And actually joining up on her job in the cherry picking service organization thing. I don't know. And they are put on a very funny scene, and in a very funny scene where they actually have to organize two kinds of cherries that ends up disastrous. And trust me, it is a very hilarious scene. Uh, of course, Applejack is still not talking, even though they know she's hiding something, but she still won't talk. So what do they do? They decide to get in the most persuasive pony in there. Pinkie Pie, they just jab her ear off. In, in a way that is so funny, but annoying, which is amazing to me. Anywho, Pinkie Pie actually starts talking Applejack's ear off, and I'm pretty sure if it could, her ear would drop off and run away. Um, and, to, and despite that, she still won't tell the truth. And then Rainbow Dash just pretty much says, all right, and lets Pinkie Pie out on her even more. Pinkie Pie is talking up a almost literal storm to a point where P Applejack just finally breaks down and says she'll tell them all the truth during breakfast the next morning. Of course, Rainbow Dash is actually kind of iffy on this situation due to the fact that why doesn't she just tell them now? So, but Rainbow Dash, though skeptical, everybody else is pretty much like, yeah, she'll tell the truth, don't worry about it. And she even, because she even, Pinkie Pie squir swears it, so it's all good. So, next morning they all get up and go head over to Applejack's room, and Applejack is gone. She has tried to skip town on the train, but the five catch her. And in a very weird and kind of lengthy chase scene with a random, with random four colts, and of course a carriage chase, because, you know, my Little Pony, known for their action-y chase scenes and gunfights. Uh, it's actually very entertaining, but um, uh, in a very after a very long chase scene, and some for some reason Pinkie Pie knocking Rarity out of a wagon because she's expecting her to catch her. Mm. And <laughs> uh, Twilight's I'm sorry, Rainbow Dash actually tackles down Applejack after the whole chase and letting loose her bag that she's been carrying around with her this whole time. And inside the bag shows ribbons of all different colors and shapes. Turns out that it's actually when Applejack went to the rodeo, she didn't win first place. She won fourth, third, even second, but she didn't win one single blue ribbon, nor did she get any of the prize money. And has been trying to work at the, cher the um, cherry picking place to actually raise money so that she could send it back to her home and didn't want to come back home empty hooked yeah. And uh, pretty much was wanting to come home 
without the disgrace of her losing everything because she has won this rodeo challenge ten times in a row and gotten blue ribbons and all the time. So this is a huge thing for Applejack, actually. And the thing is to me that, honestly, this is kind of stupid. <laughs> um, Applejack, I know Applejack is supposed to be the pony of honesty, but uh, this is a long way to go to hide something that pretty much is brought up in the episode. Um, Twilight and Fluttershy just both say, So? We weren't going to disown you just because you didn't get a blue ribbon. We were, we were actually probably more worried about you not coming home. And actually, yeah, you're a work pony, and we've seen other construction worker ponies, so we know we think you can fix Town Hall in a different way. And honestly, there was one part where Derpy sits down and the floor cracks, so I'm pretty sure that was faulty building in the first place. So, and of course, the episode ends with Applejack saying that, you know, learning a lesson, and of course, giving a letter to Celestia, which I almost forgot about. And go them going home, and of course Pinkie Pie and Rarity having to do that old push trolley thing across the tracks because they got left behind. <laughs> and so ends the episode. And uh, this episode was actually a good, solid 10 out of 10. I love this episode. This episode was filled with laughs, and as much as people will always remember it for derpy hooves, I'm actually remembering this episode for its experimental view. This is an episode that has tried something that no other episodes have tried. It's tried a dialogue less um, scenes. It's tried um, not only some very, very funny um, little references in the background, but it's also tried a carriage chase scene that almost mimics a car chase in... Um, in, a, in different movies, even though it does have an execution that is kind of silly, like she just hops in a wagon and grabs on, and four colts are sitting there just going, "Oh, okay, we're running for you," and almost an Applejack almost running four four colts into a train, four thinking, breathing colts into a train, and none of them thought maybe we should stop in front of the tracks because this mare is insane. <laughs> no one thought that. But, you know, hey, they, uh, that's just a minor complaint. Those are the little minor things. And for Derpy Hooves, okay, let me get this over with. Um, Derpy Hooves, I've explained, like, the whole name thing for me because most of the people who know of my of a show I'm working on and the script I'm writing that uh, I call her Ditsy Do, and only one character in the show calls her Ditsy Do, and that's Sakura because Derpy doesn't rhyme with anything else. And, uh, or not much. Um, and uh, everybody else calls her Derpy, so they've all come to me after this episode going, Change the script! Her name's Derpy! And I'm like, no, no, it's a surname. Just, just go with it. Uh, other than that, her voice... I like it, and I think it could have been different. Maybe because I've heard the fan versions of Derpy so much that I'm used to that. And I kind of want it wanted to hear something like that, but still this is a good variation and I'm pretty sure not everything's going to be the same. And maybe it just sounded weird to me due to the fact that actually it's Rarity's voice coming in as Derpy's. So I kind of recognized it and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. Uh, other than that, this episode was fantastic. I loved it. And I have no complaints about it, and again, I can't, I, I can go on a rant on just little sections of this episode for a very long time, but I can't really do it. And this is an episode you have to experience for yourself, but this is a fan episode, y'all. I am going to say this now. This is a fan episode. Mostly fans will like this episode. Not too many new people will actually get into this episode, but then again, if you are watching this episode, you're probably not coming in. You're probably not coming in new. You're probably, you know, working your way up to this episode. Or you might have caught it on by accident and you see the carriage chase and you think it's kind of cool and that'll bring you in. But Derpy and other things in the background are not for non-fans. But other than that, this episode is quite fantastic. So I say you guys check it out and experience it for yourself because my words can't just do it justice. So until next time, y'all, peace.